Number 66, 130 degrees Celsius day. The relative humidity is 75%, and that evening the temperature drops to 20 degrees Celsius, well below the dew point. Letter A, how many grams of water condense from each cubic meter of air? All right, so first thing is, um, remember relative humidity is equal to the vapor density that is in the air divided by the saturation vapor density multiplied then by 100. So they tell us the relative humidity and they tell us just, just let's focus on this first part. On a certain day, there's 30 degrees Celsius uh, air and the relative humidity is 75%. That means the relative humidity here is 75. The vapor density of uh, water in the air is what we are finding. The saturation vapor density, that is looked up. When the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, the saturation vapor density is 30.4 gram per cubic meter. So let's just leave it in gram per cubic meter for now, 30.4, and then multiply. And we can because this is just a simple percentage, so the units aren't really important. But you got to know what units you're putting in so that you know what units you're getting out. And then multiply that by 100. So solving now for right the, va uh, the vapor density here we would just have to basically do 75 times 30.4 divided by 100. And we get about 22.8. So the vapor density is 22.8. All right, grams, grams per cubic meter. So what that means is on a day that's 30 degrees Celsius, the and pretend that this is one cubic meter, one meter by one meter by one meter, that means that the amount, the weight, excuse me, the mass, the mass of, I mean, we could find the weight, but technically it's mass. The mass of water in this air right now, water vapor in the air is going to be 22.8 grams. Okay, that's the mass. All right. Then what happens is now this particular um, volume of air Right, is now going to change its temperature. It says now in the evening the temperature drops to 20 degrees Celsius. So what's going to happen is, why don't we just take this identical box, copy it, let's see if we can. All right, and now this box is going to be under 20, under 20 degrees Celsius uh, air. But if you notice, look at back at the table over here, What's the maximum? What's the saturation vapor density? The saturation means the maximum, right? What's the saturation vapor density now? So it's only 17.2 grams. That's the max that this air can hold. That's the maximum mass. So wait a minute. During the day, the air has 22.8 grams in it. And now at night, the maximum amount can only be 17.2. Hmm. Where does it go? Well, it condenses, right? That's the dew. When you go outside and you see the water on the cars and the grass and whatever, that's the dew. Okay, so if I were to just subtract the 2 here simply, the 22.8 minus the 17.2, that would give me the amount that condenses. And what do we get? We get about 5.6 grams. Right? This is all in grams still, 5.6 grams. So this is the mass that condenses, okay? Now it asks us, it says how many grams? Oh, great, okay. So that's it, right, 5.6. I kept talking about, I was consistent talking about a square meter, excuse me, a cubic meter, and that's what they want me to find. So that's the answer for letter A. All right, that's the answer for letter A. So now let's take a look at letter B. What does B want us to do? And it says how much heat transfer occurs by this condensation. So basically we're talking about um, basically a gas, right, turning into liquid. So we're talking about a phase change. You know that that's the phase change formula. The heat involved is going to be equal to the mass multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization since we're going from gas to liquid. Okay, so now here um, we're calculating Q. The mass has to be in terms of kilograms now. So you might want to do your conversion here. So do divide that by 1000, so 0 0.0056 multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization. Got that from the table. This is 2256. That's in joule, uh, excuse me, kilojoules. We might want to convert that into joules, so just multiply that by 1,000, just so we have our Q in joules. It's not totally necessary, but for any steps later on, we might want to do that now. 2256. So 1.26, 1.26 times 10 to the 
three, four, and that's in terms of joules. All right. So that's the amount of heat transferred. And now, uh, letter uh, letter C. What temperature increase could this cause in dry air? All right. Uh, so basically, now what we need to know is we're talking about temperature increase. We're talking about right uh, dry air. So we need to know the formula Q is equal to M C delta T. They want us to find temperature increase, so we're after delta T. So we just have to simply divide out the mass and the specific heat from both sides. Right, so that's our formula now. And this is the amount of energy right, that is being utilized, right, or being, um, right, if you're thinking about going from, if you're thinking about going from gas to liquid, does that involve a heat transfer Inward or outward, meaning that is that a is that an endothermic process or an exothermic process? And you're like, oh no 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 no, not chemistry. Well, it's chemistry and physics. What do you think? Well, it cools down, right? In order to go from, I mean, it doesn't necessarily cool; it condenses. But you can think about it as cooling, right? You're going from a gas to a liquid. So that involves basically a loss, right, of heat energy. Okay. So that object going from gas to liquid is losing energy. So then the temperature should rise. Well, where's that energy coming? Uh, or if that energy is being lost, right? Where's the energy going? Well, it's going into the air. All right. So it should it should represent a positive change. So delta T now. So basically now, if I'm talking about temperature increase, the reason why is the sign might be important here. But you know the the Q value now. You know technically speaking, the this is the amount of heat that transfers, but from the vapor's perspective, it's negative, right? Because it's losing energy. And then the Q now for the uh, air would be positive. So we'll just plug in the positive value divided by the mass. That has to be in kilograms now, so 0 0.0. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. What temperature could this cause in dry air? So hold on one second. Wait, what's the mass? We need the mass of dry air. Oh, so, okay, so we can do this, you know what we could do? We could do this per, uh, we could do this per cubic meter, All right? Since we kept talking about uh, everything, yeah. So since we kept talking about everything per cubic meter, all right, um, and this is the, this is the energy per cubic meter, just keep that in mind. That means I would need to know the mass per cubic meter, all right? And then that means you would have to know the density of air. Right, so the density of air is about 1.29. Okay, so um, we're going to use that value in our calculation. So now, and that's the density, but notice that the volume is simply one. So that means the density is the same as the mass. Okay, so that's 1.29, and then multiplied by the specific heat of air that's gotten from the table. So that's 721, and let's see what we get. So this would be 1.26 times 10 to the fourth divided by then. 1.29 times 721, and this would be about 13.5 degrees Celsius or so. That would be the temperature change, all right? So, guys, hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more questions. Take care.